Okay, so here we'll talk about uh, uh, another type of capacitor called the cylindrical capacitor. Yeah, the cylindrical, yuan zhu xing the capacitor. So here it shows the cross section uh, uh, of the cylindrical capacitor. So you can only see, oh, this is a circle. This is another concentric circle. Uh, yes, actually it's just a cross section. So it, it will be something like something like this. Uh, this is the, the inner coil, and then this is the outside uh, outside plate. Okay. So so it says in cross section a cylindrical capacitor of the length L. So uh, this is L uh, formed by two coaxial cylinders of radii A and B. So uh, the smaller the smaller one has a radius a and the largest one has has a, a radius b okay so um we assume that l is much larger than b so that we can declare the fringe of the uh, electric field that occurs at the end of the cylinders so yeah actually the yeah actually it doesn't really necessary that uh, yeah for this, but if we assume that the 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 e field are uniform uh, between the plate, then uh, L is much larger than B will be a will be an important condition because um, of course we know that uh, yeah for the inside part it will be more like a uniform e field, but for the outside part, it is not so uniform. So if this length is much uh, longer than A and B, then we can tend to uh, ignore the part which is uh, slightly smaller. So for this part or that part, the E field are slightly smaller. So if that part uh, occupies a smaller portion, then yeah, then then we can for sure. Uh, Assume that all the e field between the capacitors are quite uniform, then the error will be will be smaller. Okay, so the so this is why he uh it need to uh have this condition. Okay, so each plate contain a charge of magnitude q uh here charge and, and the field uh and the field magnitude e is related as follow. Okay, so here hmm. So actually, this one is the is the Gauss law. So actually, the Gauss law should be like uh, epsilon naught integration of uh, e dot dA equals Q in close. Okay, so here we assume the Gaussian surface is uh, this a uh, red circle. This is the Gaussian surface. So we can see that uh, this is positive side. This is the outer one is a negative side. So the Q in close will be plus Q, will be plus Q. So this Q in close is, uh, is plus Q itself. And then, um, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, so the right side uh, or actually the left side of the Gauss law. So we have a uh, epsilon naught will be simply here and then E dot dA because we already assume that the E field is uniform. This is uniform. Okay, so uh, E dot dA, uh, actually E and dA are always uh, parallel to each other and positive it is nothing but E times A. And uh, yeah, so E and E is the uniform E view. So we have E here times the AA is the uh, cross section area. The cross section, uh, actually the, the area, the area here. So it, it will be like, um, it will be like, yeah, actually this is the Gaussian surface like this. So this is the Gaussian surface. So right in the middle of uh, 
of uh, two uh, coil. So actually the surface of this uh, cylinder will be like um, two pi r. Two pi r will be the circumference of a circle and then times the L will be the height. So it is like uh, you try to cut, cut the cylinder and then you try to flatten it, then it will become a rectangle. Uh, and then and then you flatten it, then it becomes a rectangle. The height will be nothing but L and the width is uh, two pi R. Two pi R, R is the radius of the Gaussian surface. Uh, okay, so here we have two pi R L, which is the area. Okay, so next we can also apply the definition of the uh, potential difference V equals the integration of E dot dS uh, from negative to positive, although originally in chapter 24, it should be something something like this, but yeah, actually this one also holds when you try to apply to a capacitor. Okay, so the potential difference between the plate will be like you integrate E dot dS or E times dS, and then from the negative plate to a positive plate. So here, uh, actually this is the this is the initial point. This is the negative plate. This is the positive plate. Okay. So um, e dot ds. So we know that we know that e uh, e will be something like um, so here it implies that e equals q over two pi r uh, l and then epsilon naught. Mm, yeah, epsilon naught like this. Okay, so here we get this expression of E between the uh, yeah, between the capacitor. Actually, the E is yeah actually is not so not so uniform not so uniform. But yeah, when it uh, refer to different direction yeah, and with the same R then yeah the E will be will be the same. So yeah, so here for D S. Ds is something like um, Ds is is in this direction. It's in this direction. So it's integrate. It's integrate from B to A. But Ds points to the opposite direction with uh, with the E field. So here we have a negative sign. We have a negative sign. So here we have Ds is something like negative Dr. Dr. Okay, so it will be like a negative integration from B to A, B to A, and then uh, most of the things are constant to R. So this is a constant to R, 2 pi, epsilon naught, and also L are constant to uh, R. So inside the integration side, we have dR over R due to this, uh, due to this R. So we have R here. And then all the other stuff are placing outside. Okay, mm -hmm. so in this sense, integrating uh, one over R is nothing but lateral law of R. And then we evaluate from A to B, but uh, with a negative sign. So it turns out to be uh, this stuff. And then with this one, turns out to be lateral law of uh, B minus lateral law of A. So this one is actually lateral law of B over A. And then this, uh, this is just a big constant uh, in the front. Okay, so we get the expression V equals this one. And then from the definition, C equals Q over V. So Q over V, so we just move V over and then all the other stuff over. So we move this stuff to the left side, then two pi epsilon L is on the top. And then lateral law of B over A is uh, at the bottom. Okay, so here is the expression for the cylindrical. Oh, so actually, uh, 
just to um, yeah, so just to clarify, just at the beginning, I, I mentioned that other EVO are uniform, but actually, if it is not so uniform, actually the EVO between the cylindrical capacitor is uh, related to the to the to the distance of the point to the to the center related to the R. So yeah, so actually this is the expression of E, which is inversely proportional to R. And finally, we get the expression of the C. So here we see that uh, this is a constant. And actually, it relates to the length. So if the length is longer, if the length is longer, then yeah, then you can imagine the capacitance is larger. And if you uh, fix L and then you try to increase C, which means that you need to make this uh, Natural law of B over A to be smaller to to make thing uh, to make C larger. So if B over A is smaller, which means that uh, this gap is uh, narrower, which is like uh, if you uh, for this one, uh, which is like uh, yeah A uh, B may be like uh, three times of B or yeah two point two point something times of A. But if you would like to make C larger, it will be something like this is the inner part, this is the this is the outer part. So you make you make uh, B over A smaller. You make B over A smaller, then also natural law of B over A will be smaller because natural law is a monotonic function. So if this one is smaller, then C will be C will be larger. Uh, C will be larger. Okay. Yeah, so it is somehow like uh, you narrowing this gap, narrowing this gap. Okay, so we still have another one, but we don't have a complete uh, derivation here. But if you are interested, you can try to um, try to do it by yourself. Yeah, uh, actually, this is not so difficult. But yeah, this case is about a spherical capacitor. You can try to um, use a similar derivation, like the cylindrical capacitor. Yeah, it's more like this one. Actually, this is a cylindrical, and then this is a cross section, and it is a sphere. Although the cross section looks the same, <laughs> but actually it's a sphere. So yeah, this is Chiu Ti the Dian Rong. Uh, this is Yuan Zhu the Dian Rong, but they have the same cross section. But anyway, you can yeah, you can try to practice yourself and try to derive why the capacitance will be like this. The step will be somehow similar to this one, although there will be a little bit different because the expression are, are are not the same. The expression are not the same. So this is like a lateral law of B. So which is like you try to integrate, you try to integrate dr over r. So you get the lateral law of B over A. And here, this one you can see it is like um, uh, it is like a one over one over A minus one over B, something like this. Yeah, so so you should it should be somehow like you integrating something like a uh, dr over r square. Then you can get one over r, and then you try to move the term. Then it becomes a uh, one over a minus one over b. So try to yeah, I I suggest you can try to uh, do it yourself at home. Uh, but yeah, actually this is the expression for spherical capacitor. So if you like, uh, these are the um, these are the uh, constant four pi epsilon naught. So it will be like a one over eight point nine nine times ten to the ninth power. And for this one, if you would like to uh, make c larger, then you also need to make these things smaller, which means that a and b should be close to each other. Then this whole thing. Will be will be larger, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so it's pretty much it. So this is uh, 
uh, capacitor for the spherical capacitor. And there is a special case, which is like a capacitance of an isolated sphere, A equals R, B tends to infinity, which means that we only have the inner part. We only have a sphere there. And then if you try to uh, provide some potential difference between it and the ground, then there will be some charge uh, there. Then yeah, you can regard it as a isolated sphere, which means that you only have the inner part. B tends to infinity, it is uh, infinitely large. So this one goes to infinitely far, far away. And if it if that is the case, then it feels like that uh, C, uh, it, it is like a limit of uh, B tends to infinity. And then this expression is like a four pi epsilon naught and then one over one over A minus one over B. So which is like, and then actually you also have A equals to R. So I just change this one to, to R. And here we have a B tends to infinity, which means that this one tends to zero. This one tends to zero. So which is like one over R minus zero, which is one over R, and then we inverse it again. So it will become uh, four pi epsilon naught capital R, which is, which is this one. Okay. So here, so here, so uh, here's a track point. So for capacitor charged by the same battery, uh, the surcharge stored by the capacitor increase, decrease, or remain the same in each of the following situation. Okay, so yeah. So it means for capacitor charged by same battery, same battery, which means the V is fixed. So does the charge stored by the capacitor increase, decrease, or so it asks you whether the Q increase. Okay, so I'll remain the same in the following situation. A, the plate separation of a pair of plate capacitor is increased. Okay, uh, yeah, so pair of plate capacitor of a uh, yeah, pair of plate separation of the pair of plate capacitor is increased. So, so will it increase or decrease? So you can answer in your chat room. So you can try to answer whether it's increased, decreased, or um, unchanged, maybe remain the same. Decrease. Yeah, decrease. Yeah, let me up down. Uh, Okay, so I think it is correct. So um yeah. Okay, so how about yeah, maybe maybe just finish it first and then I try to explain. So the first is decrease. So how about question B? So here is about uh, the radius of an inner cylinder is, of a cylindrical capacitor is increased. Inner cylinder, uh, radius of an inner cylinder, which means the A, A, uh, A increase. Anyone want to try? <laughs> no one want to try? Oh yeah, uh, it's the increase. Yes, see, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it increase. Okay, so how about 
part C, the radius of the outer spherical shell of a spherical capacitor is increased. Okay, part C, uh, which means that uh, B, uh, B increased. E increase. Okay, so decrease. Okay, so uh, and then this is the. Uh, Okay, so yeah, so let me try to simply explain. Uh, so for part A, um, yeah, the place separation increase. So you can check here, uh, here. So the place separation increase. So the whole thing will decrease. The whole thing will decrease. So if C decrease, Q will also decrease. So that's that's the correct answer. And then for part B, the radius of the inner cylinder increase. So A increase here. A increase. Uh, this thing decrease. Uh, this thing decrease. And then this thing also decrease. And then C increase. So C increase. Q will also increase. Okay, so this means that uh, the Q will increase for part B and then for part C, uh, radius of the outer spherical shell uh, uh, increase. So which means that B increase. Uh, so when B increase, this will decrease, this will decrease, this will increase, and the whole thing will decrease. So C decrease, so the Q will also decrease. Okay, so this is for the checkpoint. Okay, so next we try to look at a sample problem. Okay, so <clears throat> let me see. Yeah, here. So here it says uh, switch S is close to connect the uncharged capacitor uh, with capacitance C to the battery of the potential difference V. Okay, the lower capacitor plate has a thickness of uh, L equals 0 0.5 centimeter and face R A. Yeah, this is the uh, surface area and it consists of copper in which the density conduction uh, electrons is uh, N. Uh, this uh, with this large number uh, electrons per meter cube. So this is a density, which means that in uh, one meter cube, there are so many uh, electrons there. So from what step D within the plate uh, must electron move to the plate phase uh, as the uh, capacitor becomes charged. Okay. So first of all, we know uh, we know C is this value and V is this value. So so we can quickly calculate how many charge are there. So we can simply use Q equals C times V, and then we just plug in uh, zero point two five times ten to minus six power, and then times uh, this is twelve volt. So this is um, uh, three times ten to minus six coulomb. Okay, so we can quickly know uh, how many charge are there. And actually, in chapter twenty four, we just uh, simply tells you that uh, the, all the charge will go to the surface, so we it will not go uh, in deep in the conductor. But actually, um, yeah, even though it only occupies a small Small depth, but at, uh, but at very least, the, this depth is not zero. So it asks you what is the depth because there will be some uh, limit, like the uh, electron density. Electron density, the 
the density cannot occupy just zero volume. Yeah, actually in a one meter cube uh, volume, there, there, there will be, all, all, although this number is very large, this is 8.49 times 10 to the 20th power, but yeah, but at least this number is not infinitely large. So there will be a very uh, narrow depth there so that, or maybe shallow depth there so that, uh, yeah, so it, it really occupies some, some depth. So here it tried, we try to answer uh, how, uh, yeah, well, actually how depth is this? So now this is the charge amount. So we try to convert it into the number of electrons. So N is the number of electrons. Uh, it will be like uh, three times 10 to the minus six power. This is a charge amount over 1.6 times 10 to minus 19, which is the elementary charge amount. So we know that, uh, how many electrons are there. So this number, uh, this number will be 1.87 times 10 to the 13 power electrons. Electrons. Okay. And then here we already know the density. We already know the density. So we should know uh, how, la how large area it should occupy. And we also know the surface area. So we know, uh, suppose n, n is, uh, n is this density. So if it's multiplied by the volume, the volume will be like A, the surface area times the D. So A is the surface area times the D will be this, will be this volume. And then this volume multiplied by the density will be the number of uh, electron there. So, so we try to move this thing to the right side. So we will have D equals capital N over, uh, sorry, N times A, small n times A. Uh, so N is uh, 1.87 times 10 to the 13 power over, N is here, 8.49 times 10 to the 28th power. And then times the surface area, which is uh, two times 10 to the minus fourth power, like this. Okay, so this is uh, 1.1 times 10 to minus 12 meter, so which is very short. <laughs> if you would like to uh, write it as the scientific prefix, it will be like 1.1 uh, picometer, picometer. Okay, so if you try to uh, watch the news about the technology, so when the news tells you about all the technology for the TSMC, or if you're interested in, yeah, just like the computer stuff, uh, it will mention or uh, it use uh, what kind of technology, like uh, how many nanometer. So recently uh, we have uh, something like a three nanometer. If you try to watch the recent news. So, uh, so yeah, so if you, can remember the scientific prefix. It, it means that three nano is something like uh, three times 10 to minus ninth power. And this is, this is this number 10 to the minus 12. So it is like uh, uh, several hundred times shorter than the, than the uh, circuit element. Of course, the circuit element should be large. A transistor is like, is something like this and most transistor, but of course, yeah, when when it goes down to uh, when it go down to uh, uh, three nano, the transistor doesn't necessarily look like this. Yeah, it's just only for something like uh, twenty eight nanometer. It will be something like this. Uh, this is the gate. Uh, this is the drain. This is the short. This is the source. So yeah, maybe maybe ECE student will will need to learn about the most transistor. But yeah, if if you are see if I can just forget it. Yeah, but yeah, just let you know some, some of the ideas about the numbers because I think for engineering students, uh, you have the numbers in mind is uh, important. Don't try, uh, yeah, so you, sh you should at least have some common sense about or how large is the number, whether this number is large or small. 
and then maybe even without computer or calculator, you can still estimate or how large it should be, something like that. So just let you have some have some sense about oh, how small this distance is. Okay, so the next is about uh, capacitor in parallel and in series. So the first is in capacitor in parallel. Okay, so finally it becomes a very uh, simple um, uh, equation, which is like you just add all the, all the capacitor together. So in order to derive this, uh, this uh, result, so we have, let's say we have three um, capacitor in parallel. In parallel means suppose we have one capacitor, two capacitors, and then the third capacitor. We try to connect, just say uh, one side together. We connect one side together, and then we connect another side together. Then they are parallel capacitor. If if I have the fourth one, it will be something like that. It is a uh, parallel. And then in the next page, we will talk about what is series. So uh, in Chinese, um, parallel is like uh, Bing Lian. Okay, so yeah. So here, suppose uh, for each of the capacitor, uh, yeah, so here we have three capacitor parallel uh, to each other. And uh, for each of the capacitor, we have this uh, Q equals dV uh, individually. So for the first one, uh, let's say this one is the first one, this is C1. So we have a uh, Q equals dV and the second one also. So in this sense, one of the variable will share because we try to connect the two plates together. Uh, to, yeah, actually, uh one of the pay together and then uh, the other pay also uh, connect together so in this sense v1 v2 v3 will be the same so we only call it v so this uh, v is shared by is shared by the three uh, by the three capacitor by the three capacitor Okay, so in this case, uh, we have Q1C1, but not V1, V2, V3. So we only have Q1, Q2, Q3, C1, C2, C3. But uh, the V is shared because we just connect the two terminals uh, together individually. Okay, so in this sense, um, here we try to find so-called equivalent capacitance. Let me see whether we have this. Uh, oh, yeah, we can see uh, here it says they're equivalent, which means that if now we don't want to place three capacitor, we we want to replace these three capacitor with a single single capacitor, which is CEQ. So this this is called the equivalent capacitor. If we replace the three capacitor by this one, then when you try to measure the uh, charge or the try to measure the voltage difference, then uh, it, they look exactly the same. Then we will call this circuit and this circuit are equivalent to each other. And yeah, we will say uh, this is the equivalent capacitance to these three cap uh, parallel capacitor. So in this sense, here we have an other circuit. So very simple. We only have a capacitor and a battery as the same battery there. So in this case, we have CEQ equals QV because uh, we try to make these two equivalent to each other. So we also share this same V. And then we try to make things like a Q equals a C equivalent V. So it becomes this one. So look like this. And here in the between, uh, we have Q equals Q1, Q2, Q3, because um, on this plate, uh, there are plus Q1, plus Q2, plus Q3. So actually we can, re we can just add them together. And then for the bottom plate, we should also should see 
of q should be equal to negative q1 plus uh, negative uh, negative q2 plus negative q3 so for, for negative q so in this sense uh, we can regard it as the same because uh, we we have the same voltage difference across the capacitor or these uh, parallel capacitors then the charge there should be the same so which means that we add these three charges together should be equal to plus q so we have q equals to q1 plus q2 plus q3 and then we can just uh, replace q1 q2 q3 by uh, c1v c2v and c3v so and then we can factor out v because of v is a common factor so we have c1 plus c2 plus c3 equals v and q is actually ceq equals v which means that ceq equals this stuff and of course finally v and v can be cancelled because v is not as it's not zero so finally we can get ceq equals c1 plus c2 plus c3 so this this one is only for three capacitor if we have n capacitor uh, in parallel then ceq will be nothing but the summation of all their uh, capacitance so this is quite straightforward and let's uh, talk about this part and then we can have a break so here we talk about uh, uh, capacitor in series so in series uh, in Chinese it is called uh, chuan nian. so chuan nian, uh, actually in series means here we have uh, one capacitor two capacitor uh, three capacitor okay so here rather than connecting this one two three together we don't we don't do this anymore we try to connect them back to back which means that we connect the back bottom plate of the first one with the uh, top plate of the second one so so here this is top this is bottom so we try to connect the bottom plate of the of the first one with the top plate of the second and then we try to uh connect the bottom plate of the second capacitor with the top plate of the uh, third capacitor so we we call it uh, we try uh, we call it we connect the capacitor back to back then it is in uh, back to back then we call uh, they are in series <laughs> so um, yeah so here the sharing variable are not the same anymore because here uh, if we just don't apply any battery there which will be something like this so there shouldn't be any charge uh, between and after you place a battery there then actually here we shouldn't have any uh, excess charge no excess charge there because for capacitor there is no current can going in or going out at uh, at this node and also this node there's no path because the yeah actually the current can go going in this direction and they are stopped by the plate because the two plates uh, doesn't touch each other the two plates doesn't touch each other so there cannot be any charge going in in this node or this node so in this sense uh, that it should it can only be a negative q at this plate and then plus q on this plate and then the total charge should still be zero and similarly for this for this node okay we only have negative q on the plate on this plate and plus q on this plate so no excess charge at this node either and then similarly if this is plus q this should be negative q and this is negative q this is plus q so the sharing variable should be q rather than v from uh, from the on the previous case so here the sharing variable is q because they are shared so q should be shared and then here we have a c1 c2 c3 and then v1 v2 v3 so the voltage or the potential difference across each capacitor are not different anymore are, are not are not the same anymore so here 
uh, here we also try to replace the three capacitor in series uh, into one single equipment capacitor. So here we also have uh, CEQ equals Q over V. Uh, C from this uh, from this uh, circuit diagram. Okay, so here uh, as much as Q is the same, and also we have this one. We have this one. Okay, V equals V one plus V two plus V three. So here we try to also place a V across here, and then V across here, and then the V one, V two, V three. When we try to add them together. It should be actually V. This will be actually V. Later on, you you will know that this is so called the Kirchhoff uh, voltage law. Of course, if you are ECE student, you should have learned uh, uh, circuit analysis about the Kirchhoff current law, or maybe in high school physics you might know uh, the Kirchhoff voltage law which is about uh, how to add the uh, potential difference together to form this one. Okay, so V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. Then we try to play uh, plug in uh, Q equals Z1, Q equals Z2, Q equals Z3 into here. And then Q can be factored out. Uh, Q times uh, one over Z1 plus one over Z2 plus one over Z3. Okay, so Q over V is one over this whole thing. So we have one over this whole thing. Uh, C, C E Q equals this stuff. So which means that one over C E Q equals one over C one plus one over C two plus one over C three. So in this case, we get the expression of the um, uh, series capacitance uh, and uh specifically for three capacitor so yeah so actually you just try to um take the reciprocal of the capacitance and then add them together and then take the reciprocal again then it will become the equivalent capacitance if you have a uh, n capacitor in the series then you take the reciprocal of the n capacitance and then add them together and then take the reciprocal again it become the ceq and usually uh, when n equals two will be the most common case. Okay. n equals two, then it becomes a CEQ equals one over one over C1 plus one over C2. Then it will be nothing but C1, C2 over C1 plus C2. So this is the, the most common case to use. But yeah, so if you have, more than you just take the reciprocal and them together. But yeah, if n equals two, then this one might be maybe a quicker way to yeah, at least press the calculator. You don't need to or pre, pre, uh, press the one of them and then inverse and then plus it makes, uh, yeah. Yeah, this will be easier to, to, to press uh, in the calculator. Okay, so yeah, so this is, pretty much about the parent uh, and series capacity. And let's have a 10 minutes break.